Here at the Proving Grounds, it's trapping season. We're starting to get some dupe traps out to work towards our wildlife management goals. Not only is trapping a wildlife management tool, but it's a great way for outdoors men and women to hone their skills. You're reading fresh sign, you're outside, spending time in creation, learning more about critter behavior. And on top of that, a big bonus is a nice, beautiful pelt that can be used for great things like making a warm blanket. If you're new to trapping or have been going a few seasons and you're looking to up your game, this video is gonna focus on locating trap sites. When I'm looking for a new trap site, whether I'm using the Duke cage trap or the dog proof, first thing I'm gonna start looking for is fresh sign. Now that could be tracks or scat or maybe a game trail, but I'm also using the tools at hand. It's into deer season here. We've still got a lot of Moultrie mobiles out. I'm gonna be using those Moultrie mobiles to ID areas where predator activity is very high. Once I locate an area that I feel like there's a lot of critters moving through, then I start really honing in and finding that microsite to figure out exactly where to set the trap. When we're using the dog proof and the live trap, we're primarily looking at possums and raccoons, two notorious nest predators. They can wipe out a turkey nest, quail nest pretty quick. Like deer and other critters, predators oftentimes use travel corridors, hard edges, maybe right along the edge of a food plot or maybe a clear cut and timber edge or an interior road. If I'm finding a lot of sign in an area, I'm gonna start looking for an intersection. I'm looking for two travel paths that meet. That way I can up my chances of a critter passing that area. For many trapping seasons, we've had a lot of success from this very location. It's a great spot and there's several reasons why. We've got a little hidey hole food plot right here to my right and back behind me, there's a long ridge top food plot and an interior road that runs like this and this road that runs into the food plot intersects right at this location. There's a lot of edge and habitat features right around here, food plot, road, and actually a little hardwood timber right here. Even though this is a hub of activity with a lot of edge coming together, a great little travel corridor for critters, we're not just throwing the trap out willy-nilly. It's time to really start thinking about that nose. As you can see, this is the uphill side and the slope falls down. Well, during the night, thermals are gonna take over Cool air is going to sink. That air is going to drift across the intersection of both these roads and down into some habitat features. Any critter that's crossing this road or working this edge, they're going to be downwind of this trap site. If this trap was on the downhill side, that scent would be drifting down and never cross these interior roads. Whether it's the predominant wind, you know, you're looking at the forecast and there's a bunch of northwest cold winds blowing. During the night, that scent is gonna be carried. That's what you're using to get a critter's nose, get their attention, and bring them to the trap site. It's about scent. So just like your deer hunting, really consider where your scent is being carried. Only this time, you want your scent going to the critter. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. Sometimes folks will find a hot spot like this and they're spot on, but they'll take the trap and they'll move it 10, 15 yards off site, try to tuck it in some brush and get it kind of hidden. Hey, for possums and raccoons, it doesn't matter. Get that trap right there on the site. It doesn't matter if it's out in the wide open, they're going by their nose. Make sure that trap is right there close. So when they hit the scent, boom, they're at the trap. 
Coyotes are a different breed and that takes different techniques. So if you're looking to trap coyotes, make sure you check out the links in the description and learn more about how to set a flat and a dirt hole set. Not only is this location great for being right there close to the activity where predators are gonna be, but this makes it easy for trappers to check traps. Time is a valuable resource, especially on the trap line. And having traps out in the open, on the edge of a food plot or an interior road where you can easily and quickly check traps without getting out, leaving a bunch of scent and whatnot, well, that saves a lot of time on the trap line. Each season here at the Proving Grounds, we harvest about 100 predators, give or take. And that's a combination of mostly raccoons and possums, and maybe a skunk here or there. Those furs, well, they make beautiful pelts. It's a great resource. We're trapping 100 plus predators each year. We're not removing all the predators, so don't worry. But what we are doing are helping our prey species and helping the predators that make it through a trapping season thrive and be healthier. It's all about balancing and managing wildlife appropriately. During the next few weeks, we'll be sharing tips and techniques from the trap line. And for daily content, see what we're catching on the trap line, make sure you check out our social media. Hey, no matter what you're doing this week, whether you run the trap line, maybe still chasing some venison, I hope you slow down and enjoy creation. But no matter what, listen to what the creator is saying to you and the purpose he has for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.